I say it every time, but when you sit here in, in Magic HQ, you're either casting resin all day, or you're putting sprues in boxes, or shipping them around the world, or answering customer services, or dealing with all those rational people on the internet. <laughs> um, and sometimes you forget why we do what we do. And when you guys and girls all come up here for a day and play our games and get excited about it and share your enthusiasm, it really lifts us, it really reminds us how wonderful what, what we get to do is. So thank you for coming. It really is great for us when we wake up on Saturday morning, everyone's thinking oh, what I'm doing here. When we're coming on Monday, we'll be buzzing because just seeing our hobby and people enjoying it, yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of our room to So thank you. <laughs> so the hardest thing is getting all the way to that 2,300 point army. So one of the things we put in the big red book, and I think we'll do it forever and, and will be a big focus for us, is playing at less than 1,000 points. It's a bit like this is test match cricket. And actually we've then invented one day internationals and realised that's still quite long. Only the last hour of those is any good. So let's invent T20. And actually we've tried with Van Gogh, but there's a bit of difference between big red. So anyway, ambush is coming. And so hopefully next year will be the year that we introduce Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of new people to Kingdom War. Great, it's a fantastic game, beautiful game. I think all of our games are lovely. Some children you love more than others. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so with Ambush starting in China, we're going to have a slow grow league and we're just going to try and get people to come in and join us and swap that. Well, I'd love to play your games, but there's no one in my town that plays it. And I think just by lowering that starting point could be a great way. And I'd like to have twice as many people at Clash next year and twice as many people at Edwards Tournament. Um, obviously, Ambush will be on the app for people to download. <coughs> Six armies, they'll be all plastic. So they're super cheap. We kind of realise that resin's quite pain in the <laughs> So it's just plastic, it's quite good. And forget, I know which armies they are. Heart, oops, sorry, Sam. Um, <laughs> Halflings. Halflings, Ogres. Now, uh, Rackin. Uh, Abyssals, how many is that for? Empire of Dust and Ogres. Yeah, that's a Ogres twice, it's fine. Good, there we are. So, all plastic, <laughs> chariots, <laughs> goblins. 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 No one cares about goblins. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, what I'm going to talk to you quite a bit about now is uh, a real treat. <laughs> ah, tremendous. Um, yeah, you can see where it's going. And whoever comes up with the best pun between now and the end, so I'm expecting Heckling can take a tree home with them. So there is the best pun tree. What a treat. Pardon? What a treat. There you are. Hey. Serious pun tree. I want to use that one. Me right. That one. Now, this is A, because I'm not a genius, or B, it's taken me two years and I'm a bit thick. But I've been playing games for about 30 years, and we started sculpting the inside of his spaceship about two and a half years ago. You know, I just felt a bit, didn't quite feel like we had an audience for it, because our audience are war games, or D&D is, you know, we knew to trade great ones for D&D is. Um, but then we had the. Uh, I think there was a little tree right at the back of one of the things, I think. And then I played a game at the end of lockdown, you know, paying all the stuff up. And during it, the trees down there wouldn't stand up on the wooden bases and I flopped them all, so I glued them all in, which was not beautiful for me, that's important. <laughs> Rules. Yeah, well. Um, <laughs> and so, but yeah. And then I tried to play, and this is my excuse why the dwarf army didn't move for four hours. Okay? So I couldn't get them through the woods because the woods were blocking them. So, <laughs> so the, and then I had them with the crop. But you know, who lives there? Any one of those little trees, you know, the gothic trees, the plastic trees that came in the second Kickstarter. Right? Another thing, because I'm a genius, brilliant, I thought, I'm oh, yeah, plastic tree for you. It's all right, it's in the graveyard set. We're kind of. Every graveyard has a tree, we know that, so it's fine, it goes in. Number one, selling item by a factor of four, in terrain, grade two, the plastic tree. <laughs> Go to a tournament in the summer, Northern Kings, at Nick and Ball, a load of them, paint them all up, and they put them on the little neoprene, and then, hey, here's one with some lichen on it in, in the green fields, and here's one in a kind of void world, all black and purple and weird. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Kind of tree that took us 10 seconds to sculpt. <laughs> it's the number one selling item out of this. We've got no creative no damage whatsoever. 
And then I came back and we started all playing firefight because firefight was kicking around. And I looked at the gaming table and guess what I saw? That's what we play sci-fi battles Because we're playing in Kent, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then that joined with the plastic tree and then that joined with that little sculpt that I had at the end of the... I don't know. <laughs> so you're never playing in the Lake District or Yorkshire. So now we're going to play <laughs> on gaming tables that look like your army looks. What that looks great. like is somewhere for, well, not great. Obviously, you might have to you wish to play on that. Um, yeah, well, come on, what are we doing? We spend thousands on our armies. We spend loads of time, we build together, da, 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 and then we go and play on blinking railway trees made out of wire and some nasty lichen. It's horrid. So we're, we're over, we're done with it. So that's a moment of genius. After that came an awful lot of pain. Because firstly, I had it in my head and I couldn't explain it to anybody. But what I wanted was cool looking trees that were in three pieces, totally interchangeable, so you could make a million different variants of it. So anyway. It took all ages to show the things, but eventually we got here. <laughs> the things that I think are really important with trees are this. One, they look cool, and they're not too much work. I want to buy my army. I want to paint my army and individualize the trees. I want to get them, I want to do them, I want to make them look nice. Three hours? Okay, let's see if we can do it. You get base pieces. Base pieces are flat on the bottom and have this is dipped, so I think it's concave. Yep. Yeah. So it's concave. Flat with concave, thank you. We'll get back to that. Middles are convex, and the bottom is concave on the top. And toppers are convex on the bottom, and have detail on the top. <laughs> One tray isn't enough. It's getting a bit boring, isn't it? So then we find what I have, what I have, what I have here. There's another base. How do we know it's a base? Flat on the bottom. Flat on the And now, a couple of different top ones. Now I've got two trees. <laughs> That's terrific. Whee! Whee! Yeah. Um, and then I can do that. That's a little bit there we go. That's and then suddenly. So you're going to get a theme of different heights because this can go straight up to the end. You see, so you get you start getting a bit of variety, but not too much work. Don't want to be killing yourself. And then because we're going with the mushroom thing, we've got a mushroom tree. And this is a that's the same place. Oh, so we're the base over there. So we get on the dead zone table. Mr. Dead Zone, show us out right. Yes, let's, let's get out. Yeah, I'm not kind of breaking apart because I've been together. Nice and good. So it's got a base. It's actually got a base. And it's got a, it's got a middle. It's got a thing. And it's got a different topper. And then we're going to break apart this topper. And then when you paint those up exactly the same, they now look majestic and entirely different. <coughs> So I thought I'd turn over and then look. We've got a new winner. He's here so far, not going away yet. <laughs> Someone's moved out in front. Um, and so from those five, six pieces, because that little base there, just there, and you, when you start playing around, you make sure you've got lots of these little bases so you can just, you know, that goes in here. And it's near top of them. And then we thought that's 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 not good enough. Let's also do a jungle thing. Now you're really punching out. Well, we're both at the end, end, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so we've done the kind of the base. Yeah. There's a base. <laughs> base over here. A couple of middles. There's a two middles here, and then that's a top. And that's also a top. Mm -hmm. 
so that you can event and by the way that we go because they've all got the universal fitting if you want to run down the that's the mushroom theme and have the jungle theme that's cool you can get away but if you want to have the it's completely insane so they got an avatar theme here you go that's to separate wood from the trees oh, you know what he's getting <laughs> <laughs> Just going to make sure I can give you a bag of <coughs> So that, at its core, um, is the um, is our new sci-fi <coughs> fantasy trees. And the way you paint them up will make them entirely different. Alongside that, there's going to be another one or two tools uh, with toppers. Because the topper is the thing that really makes it kind of wow and pop and sexy. So at that funding, we're going to have another three toppers. And each one of those topples will come with just a mini base, so you can just mix and match and mix and match and get scattered. And even a topper is this size, it's going to be, we've got some of the big dangly bits. And, um, don't go there. And, uh, <laughs> and so that's a different topper there. That's one of them. every overfund, we've got another three that will go. So you get, by that point, some mathematician can tell me how many places you get to the like the hedge funds. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's your side by trees. We'll give you lots of little bits and scatter any space on the tool that we have left. We'll just be putting little and teeny toppers or theme that you can just put on your bases so you can see it in. Or if you're making a, a full forest, you can have those bits and there's going to be some other cool and funky stuff, but crudely at its core. The first thing is we are not going to present this for a firefight. Don't say that. We're going to be presenting it to all those other people who may play quite a popular sci-fi game who also use really crappy trees <laughs> and should know better. And so we're going to put it out as a system agnostic for Infinity, for Legion, for 40k, for 30k, because we want lots of people to suddenly bump into our games and then, funny enough, don't forget to click some button and we'll send them a rules for Firefly. So, um, <laughs> I'll go down the Mantic family tree. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm getting it just for enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so there we go. There's a couple of other things that come with it. So, we will have beautifully modeled over there two, two maps. One, the left hand side is the void. Uh, it's all void, it's something a bit wild and wacky and crazy. The right hand side is a sci fi one. It comes in three sizes six by four, four by four, and whatever ridiculous proportion 40k is currently played upon. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I know it's got a weird size. It comes in that just in case they missed the subtle hint that the trees were for them. There's a gaming table size if you go away and build it. Two other things is we're going to get the near pre match. The goat will be saying like theme for, for the void True. game that goes on it. And this is the game. So we're all kind of doing these days. There you go, it looks beautiful. And then when you actually go about figure in the wood or is it out of the woods? Yeah. The woods there we go, Splendid. So there'll be some add-ons. They're not going to be there if you don't want them. If you've got your own maps, no problem. The trees are in one box, that's a crate full of trees. You're gonna make those like less like yeah. So you can have a bigger area of woods. So, um, <laughs> we haven't cut them yet. And there's also one other thing that I'm having like a lot, a lot of dead zone. Um, love it. Built all the ruins. A load of bits of stuff from the Antonosti from the very first Kickstarter, and then built lots of the stuff that's in everyone day to day with the rubble and putting other stuff on it. And realised I spent hundreds of hours doing something that one simple piece of plastic would have done for me. So we sculpted just some great scattered terrain. So I'm going to join them all together. You'll see them all, but they're all just nice big lumps of terrain. Spray, dry brush down, and you get them tender where you go. In case they miss the subtle hints by giving them the gaming table in the size they came with, and the fact that it's those guys that are playing with those trees, we also have some building templates. Because apparently in other games it's quite important to know if you're in or inside, inside or outside a building. Has someone built a building today? 
Just some on the fire. Please, I'm going to use one of the old cups. Yeah, that one will do it. Perfect. Here's a building. Right away here to the side. Well, there you go. Put it on and you go, right, that's the building template. Very easy. Two pieces here, or the corner piece, you go, okay. Am I in it? Oh, there's your template. So there's no arguments again about how you do it. It'll sit here. If you pick up a, uh, you know, a corner piece, you can then mark out the back edge. It's really super clear how your buildings go together. It's quite useful for firefighting, very useful for early games. And you can also do this. And these back corners are sharp on the back corner. So now, that's where it is to find it. So I, I'm using it, I'm using a, a full piece here. And then the back corner, where does the corner end? Where does it go to? Straight line between the two. So that actually has game mechanics in it for those that need it for those purposes. And for normal people, it just looks really nice. <laughs> So there we are. So that's going to be a separate crate. It's going to be sci-fi scatter, contemporary scatter. Um, some of it's going to be seen like our stuff. Some of it's going to be seen like kind of monasteries, you know, you know, kind of chapter houses. I don't know those kind of things. And again, that's going to be an add-on with the sci-fi crate. You get it. So we're going to be working on Kickstarter. So we're whacking up on Kickstarter in a couple of weeks. We're going to, go, we're going to whack it up. We'll leave the Global Manager open for a good slug of time afterwards while we get on with making the tooling. It is going to be ferocious tooling costs. So, you know, that's why it's Kickstarter because we just need that up front to help with that one. So, both your support will be greatly appreciated. But even more, if you can go and roll it under the noses of all those other people who really all be buying semantic stuff and maybe just need an introduction into the wonderful world of what we're doing, uh, shout about it, spread it, share it, great to receive. That's the next thing. Would you do a club crate? Yeah, we're going to do a, uh, we're going to do like single crates, uh, double <coughs> crates, a double crate every two trees. So if you want to like major on the trees. I think we've then got, Johnny, help me out, we've got a pledge with... There's a whole war gamer, I want everything as a gamer, and then the next one up is a club pledge, and then I think there's a retail as well. Yeah, so we're going to actually, and the whole point will be like, you know, one, two, many, yeah. and then many, many. Yeah. But because we're going to be printing those mats, we've actually gone to the Chinese suppliers and look, we don't know if we're going to need a lot of this size, a lot of that size, but basically it's a two-stage process. You print the silk, you get the neoprene, you glue the things together and you cut them up. So we said we need a, a good price so we can buy in bulk. So if a club wants six, you know, there might be six mats, three of each variety, ten boxes of stuff, 400 quid. Yeah, please. So I forget the exact numbers, but it's kind of that order of magnitude. But for a club, for a store to, to literally just do everything, there's the 151 for your whole gaming table. Pick one of those, pick three of these, off you go. And then we'll have obviously add ons, which will be our sci fi terrain and some of those other things where you can have a ruined city together with this. Mm -hmm. And that one's kind of geared towards the you know, hateful to go players and you're playing on pieces of cardboard for a while. Mm -hmm. It's a tiny tool to be dealt. Everything works. So yeah, definitely clubs, ones, and uh, you know, uh, clubs and tournaments. Tournament organising. I think it's a top. So it's tournament, club, gamer at home. Just give me a box. Cool. Thank you. Good. Well, that's sales pitch over. So we'll do that. <laughs> I hope you've had a good time. Um, I'm thinking. Uh, yes. I mean, you can leave that out. Just give it. I think we're about done. A few of you got into the secret room. That's kind of an exciting thing. Who, who got that? What do we think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Uh, <laughs> Jack, what was the highest score we got on the... Um... Okay. Number one. <laughs> um, and we've had Barry Brawl, which I think is our first. You may well see that at some point in the future. It's one of our on-the-shelf games that's uh, going to be coming out. Any idea, Any idea when, Ron? Any idea when? I have, but I'm just not going to say it. It will be. Sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I am the model of discretion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting <laughs> here. <laughs> um, <laughs>
Because it's too exciting. It's actually so exciting. Did I say it was going to be blue? I'm going to make you blow it out. I'm so impressed. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I am disciplined. There's no problem. Uh, it's fine with mine. If, you, <laughs> if I've missed done. anything, and I've missed a few things, go to Blackjack Legacy's video there yesterday. Uh, he's got a load of good scoops and a load of reveals. Because we realised this would be a bit ad hoc, and I'm making it up. I'm swearing too much. Anyway, almost no swearing in that one. And we do have a big section on Dungeon Saga Origins on there, which is going to be making a big comeback. So um, that's going to be good fun. Uh, design for, uh, yeah, well, find it all out online. Go and have a look at that. Uh, talk about Ambush, Dead Zones, getting two players set early in the new year. A new one of those, which is going to be good fun. We're going to start looking at some taster sets. We've obviously got Armada coming out on the app. So, anyone that's subscribed onto that, you'll get the full rules. So, if you've never bought the rules, you'll just get them dropped straight in. Living rule book, there you go. So, you can have a little look, have a little play. Um, and, and more exciting things to keep that going. I've got a new. This is our C members who's and there's got an interactive uh, interactive terrain coming for that in the middle of next year, so volcanoes and forts and is that right? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. All right, yeah. Good. So lots of stuff going on for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the app? Yeah. <laughs> Good okay, so tell you about the app. So that's a big request. Thank you, Martin. The app, so we did we've got we made games, we made books. The second we print them, there's a few errors in them and they're out of date. That's just what happens. But you know what? It's fine. Then we get an easy army who have worked with a brilliant guy, Greg, who kind of builds these army lists in his background, in the background, and puts them up. <laughs> and we work with him to get the books. But of course, it's a bit of a coordination getting out to a third party and so on and so forth. And increasingly, one of those things that we just realised if we needed to have in house. So we're constantly working on it, constantly keeping it up to date. Um, and so a chap came along who's uh, Elliot, who uh, built TWW, I think, the WT record, whatever it was. And he was really good. And he'd come out of it because he was a gamer himself and he kind of built it. Not only built the army lists, he was a bit more intuitive, he was very good at He'd also kind of done Math Hammer. If this unit attacks that, what's the likely outcome? Which apparently is important to people, actually. Okay, so let's try it. There we are. Um, yeah. Uh, then there's a few other things, and then the, we build the tournament organising pack that's there. We also have a living rule book in each one of these for every single game that's currently in the app. So if you've ever wanted to try Dead Zone, uh, you have the entirety of the book, not the free rules. The free rules are in the free bit, <coughs> but if you've got a subscription, you've got all the rules to all of our games. And whenever we update them, they will still update. So when the Clash of Kings book comes out, you go to bed. And so it's one of those things that when people get there, they realise that if you never want to give us any more money for paper, you don't have to. Why is that good for Mantic? Well, two things. I know how much money is coming in, so I can go and spend it. And secondly, I don't have to print a book and send it all the way around the world to you if that's not important to you. Now, I think I'll still be printing books for a fair few years to come, but I don't need to. And if you live in Chile, I can't send it to you because it just won't get there. And there's disproportionate cost of shipping that book to you. Well, they can have an app for four quid, four bucks, and they'll wake up. And... So I think an enabler to start everybody playing and being able to get it. Of course, there's going to be a huge chunk of it free in front of the subscription. And if you don't feel like subscribing, no problem. You'll still have two army lists for every gaming system. There'll still be our free rules to get you started. So there'll be a whole section for all the ambush units. In ambush, you'll go up, you'll get it, you'll hit the QR code, the QR code will take you straight to the rule book, you'll be able to play, and it'll take you to the army lists. So you can actually put your army list together with exactly what's in there, the scenarios to get you started and everything else. So tons and tons. If you go to a tournament, you don't have a subscription, you'll still just be able to use your army list for the thing. So please go have a look. It is entirely free, all of it until the end of January, January 31st, 2023. So please, there's codes, there's one on your newsletter, there's, there's codes everywhere, you can find them. NL Jam 31, yeah, look on your newsletter, and you get it right. Um, so everything's there. And if you don't want to stick with the subscription, just some people have gone in, it doesn't have to be a credit card, you can only build it one way, but you can go back five minutes later and cancel, and it won't ever charge you, and then you can decide if you buy. In January, we will send out reminders saying, at the end of this month, your credit card will be charged. Please cancel now. 
And of course you'll forget, but you'll just contact Zach on customer service and I'll give you a refund. So, you know, there's no drama. But do go and have a look and please use it while we've got it. And if you've ever thought, I quite fancy Dead Zone, but I'm not <coughs> paying 30 quid for a book, now's your chance. You can have a read, backgrounds in there, all the force lists are in there. You can build some army lists. Open that a Kickstarter too that you did four and a half years ago and pull some models out and put them together and actually play. So it's all okay. So that's the app. So yeah, please. Um, and any feedback? You know, Ed is a great guy. He's really taken on board. Please do let us have it. Um, we think it's going to be a great way of just keeping the game developing and going. Are you going to multi uh, language it? Only because I, I see you've got lots of different, lots of different languages. Yeah, we will at some point. I mean, at the moment, we've, we've got a full time guy in France. Thank you for that reminder. I forgot about that. Um, we works in France. We are putting Dead Zone into French on Monday. So that's, uh, they've got their own little campaign. So if you want the French version of Dead Zone, so we do, but you might uh, look out for it online on Monday. But um, so I think when we've got a few more games, I, I don't know if we're going to internationalize all of it we might just like here's the digital rule book in its entirety the in perpetuity version but we'll see yeah. there's a whole load of work that goes into the that living rule book if you type in that word every occurrence of that word anywhere in the rule books if you try to like line of sight in the dead zone rule book here's all the sections it'll come up with yeah. so it's that kind of stuff that's just there's a little bit of <clears throat> graft in there that Elliot has done that means that you know, if you're mid-game and you just really want to know, it's a lot quicker just look it up here than it is to, to go through this. But uh, the answer is almost certainly yes, but with no plans for when. Good questions, we'll do a few and then we'll let you all head off home and go and do your fireworks. Uh, this is our Chain Republic, <laughs> furthest ever visitor, I think, for an open day. Right. Uh, that's true. I'm getting to paint it tweets for Amada, but I'm hoping to we will see Trident Trials. One day, which is possible. Yes, one hundred percent. I think it's the most exciting thing we've ever done. Uh, you still go on your desk. Yeah, go on. This is a bit, you know, it's a bit like inside. It's like looking behind the curtain. So this was the good story behind this is when you're making a ship game, you know, open seas. <coughs> and you have a fleet, you have an army that lives in the water. <laughs> what do you think the most obvious fleet to do is? Squids. Yeah. yeah. Shark. This was the hardest one to get Matt to agree to. It took about <laughs> two years <laughs> for Matt to agree. Oh, yes. We've got Trident Realms coming and the Bissell Dwarfs. And in the middle of the year, there's a new book coming which will be covering these two armies with interactive terrain. So volcanoes and forts and fortifications. Um, what else? No, all right. That's not. Yes, it's there. Uh, there. Some uh, <laughs> different ways of playing. More different ways of playing as well. So it's going to be a massive. I think it's going to be great for everyone that got it and painted it. Just re re reinvigorates and gets them back out again. And with, we're going to, you know, we're going to have a big push on the three rules and get everybody going and getting excited to try and bring a whole other wave. Oh, the people in. Trying to keep the game buoyant. Yeah, oh. oh. Firefight. Yes. Will we be getting a Clash of Kings style book? You sure um, will. At some point. And is there going to be any fancy new stuff in it? Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> so. Everyone keeps coming to me and says, we need another army firefight in Dead Zone. We say, well, actually, no, we do. So what we need is more players. We need more people to play it, just lots more. Maybe not a few more, lots more. Like, ten times more. How are we going to do that? The new army's not going to help us do that. Then we'll get those that are excited about it. So we've got five, six armies, and they're beautiful. And Dead Zone, we've got even more. So, can I say this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... It's going to have like all the 1.5 stuff just to make it smoother and clearer, but we're going to go full porn. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. Tank porn. <laughs> we're going to add six to nine vehicles aside. That's good. And so it suddenly becomes a Kursk esque, where you have to have your infantry to protect your tanks from uh, you know, guys coming up and throwing grenades into their you know, um, exit breathing pipes, type of thing. So, 
and to take the objectives, but really brigades of three, little regiments of three tanks, three flyers, anti-aircraft, anti-tank guns, get them into position, blow the tracks off, still sits there, plowing away its machine gun for the next couple of turns. A couple of reasons. Uh, no other game that's a sci-fi war game does that. They are firefight with a couple of tanks, and every time any other game mentioning their names adds tanks, you get about three months and they nerf it because they everyone just wants. So I think everyone wants to play with tanks, so let's just give them tanks. It will look fantastic. Our plastic tank kits are remarkable, they're easy, they're actually really cheap. We will do a buy you know, three for the price of two kind of box, and we will give you a resin upgrade to make it a slightly different variant, to make it a command variant, to make it a plative armour, to like have tracks reinforced, so that all that gubbins that makes them really cool and interesting and unique so you can do your army building on your tanks. So the rules committee just has to do that. Easy. Can we have a disclaimer on that? We haven't used any of that. No. Yeah, you can have a disclaimer. Anyway, that's what's going to happen. Didn't easy, and I was worried about it in the slightest. I think it's middle next year. Enjoy Christmas. This is what happens when, Rob, when Matt lets me talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you get it in Kickstarter, so I just like, wrote it and put it in the Kickstarter. You know, I said, I do retail and stop me doing that. So now I just do the open bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, I think that'd be really good fun. We've got the plastics, we've got that. And I think that's the way we'll just do it. Like, who doesn't want to play that game? Who doesn't want to just say, like, yeah, okay, next Sunday we are having. And keep it. But, it, 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 it's still going to be a two hour game. It's not going to make it into a six hour apocalypse game. We've got other plans for that. Yeah. So it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's going to be. How do I go from 1,000 to 2,000 points? This way. Still on a six by four. Just get them so that they're just. <coughs> so I, 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 it will be tough for the RC, but I know it'll can I edit a video before I go to that? <laughs> yeah, no, this is why it wasn't live stream. Yeah. <laughs> it's too late, I've been on Blackjack Legacy yesterday. <laughs> Does that help? Yeah. I think it's been a great fun. I think it's a beautiful game. I think Firefight was just remarkable with Wiley Sharon, which is gorgeous. It just needs that 1.5 polish, the sandpaper, just to knock off the rough edges. They said, where should we go? And we kept talking about armies, and I said, no, you know what, it's not. We need now more people to play more and what beautiful about these games tanks chunking out we do have a tournament firefight tournament on the 29th of november down in sutton if anyone's interested there you go anyone's in sutton get some points you don't need a lot there we go perfect there we are so where will we find out about that we've got a new app possibly if you, if you haven't given it to the great new alliance because we dedicated the app all events have a little section in the app now and if you email it you just put it on uh, for some models such as the uh, Riverguard Dam Busters and I'll oh, do one for the same army. Are yeah. well, there any plans to add like variant pieces, especially for the for the Dam Busters specifically? The only model on the site is the Sentinel. Yeah. But obviously in the game you can have them as a unit of three. Yeah. So there's any plans to add like variant heads or arms or So I mean it, I think and the answer is... This is a very worried look over there. <laughs> I think the, the question, the, the bigger question is, how do we kind of complete out the Kings of War armies? Mm. You know, I think that's, I know it's one of those ones, and that's one of the reasons why we've um, <coughs> slightly, well, we are going back to some of the armies we've done, like the Ogres, and going, look, let's just get them really up to where we are now. I like the Ogres, and that was a hard one because the Ogres weren't bad. You know, even the PVC, they're pretty decent models. I mean, you glue them together, got them on the army, you got some paint on them, they look blinking good. So you have to be a lot gooder, that's proper English, that is, <laughs> to, be, to be, you know, the, so, but, and I don't know if you've seen, has everyone seen the new Ogres today? The new Spruce? Yeah. You gave us yeah, some. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it all just comes together, doesn't it? <laughs> Almost seamless. Um, they're gorgeous, and we've got a new tool maker. So Luigi's been sculpting this level for ages, and what's been happening between Luigi's sculpts and the end product is he's been getting the grade <coughs> in the tooling process. Now it's obviously heartbreaking. It's also one of the things why you don't press the big red button that says tool everything because you get, 
you know, the goblins, I think, were remarkable. Yeah, they looked lovely and they came through the tooling process. Uh, 98% of them are the best goblins on the market. But there's other figures that have come out, actually. I just don't like the lack of detail down here. I just don't like that. You know, it's not where we want to be, so you don't want to go and do 10 more. I saw those there, and we said, right, let's just go. Getting back to your question. Um, they very, the river guard very nearly made it into plastic in the early part of next year. Oh. But they didn't because Night Stalkers pushed their way in front. Um, but we are making a very concerted effort over the next three years to both backfill units and create new units that push old, boring, inherited units out. So there's nothing you push out in Trident Realms because it's our army. But you know, if you take the Twilight Kin. Um, we are not going to do, you know, cool, heavy army looking six foot elves because there's nice armies out there. They've been done. It's been done. If you scratch that itch and scratched it, so we're going to say, what's Twilight Kingdom on this? And